topic is three point starter necessity of a starter for dc motor so while starting a dc motor we are always preferred to have one starter so why this starter it has to be used for a dc motor we have for a, a dc motor ia is equal to v minus eb by ra v minus eb divided by ra uh, if that is the case, when starting, uh, if there is no flux cutting takes place, if nothing is there, if everything is uh, stationary, um, then EB is equal to 0. So there is no back EMF. If when EB is equal to 0, um, this uh, IA is equal to V by RA because V minus EB whole divided by RA. So IA is equal to V by RA. Hence, armature resistance is very, very small in order of 0.5 ohms always for any DC motor. So armature uh, resistance is very very small in the order of uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.4, something like that. If we consider a 5 HP motor working at 220 volt, uh, it's a starting current. For example, if it has been considered 220 volt 5 HP motor, so uh, V by RE. So V is the voltage 220 volt. So there is a rating as a 5 HP motor. So 220 divided by 0.5 because we consider armature resistance is 0 0.5 amps. So there is V by R, so V by RE, so armature current 440 amps is coming, 440 amps. So starting current 440 amps are coming when you switch on this motor for a 5 HP motor. By the rating of the motor, the rated current is equal to 5 HP, so 5 into 735.5, we are converting into watts, so divided by 220. What is the rating of the uh, this motor, the current rating is 16.72 amps. Just imagine, so rated current of the motor, it is designed for 16.72 amps, but when you switch on the motor, so starting current, it may take up to 440 amps. So instead of 16.72 amps maximum, if 440 amps is flowing, so it can do any damage for the machine. So to prevent this, the starting current in a DC motor, we are using starters. Now construction of starter. Construction wise, uh, there is a diagram has been given uh, for a starter. Construction wise, starter is a variable resistance integrated into a number of sections as shown in the figure beside. So there is number of sections. So there are variable resistance with the number of sections here. The contact points of these sections are called studs. So stud 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and run and are shown separately as of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and run. Other than that, there are three main points referred to as L, the line, A, armature terminal, F, fuel terminal. So L is a line which is connected to the line. So that you can see is connected to the line. F is a field which is connected to field winding. A which is connected to the armature of the motor three main terminals and from there it gets the name three point starter why the three point starter it has got three main points one is L which is connected to line one is F which is connected to field of a motor and the second one is A that is connected to armature of the motor now studying the construction of three point starter in further details reveals that the point L is connected to the electromagnet called overload release so that you can observe here, L is connected to a electromagnet called overload release. This is called overload release. It is connected, the L point is connected to overload release, OLR. The other end of OLR is connected to the lower end of conducting lever of starter handle. So other end of this uh, lever, uh, other end of this electromagnet is connected to the lower end of the conducting lever. So other end is, uh, is a conducting lever. So this is conducting lever of starter handle where spring is also attached with it. So there is a spring here. So other end of electromagnet is connected to the spring. Then the starter handle also contains a soft iron piece housed in it. So this is the starter handle, the starting handle. 
so this is a soft end piece which is attached to the starter handle the handle is free to move to the other side run against the force of the spring so this starter handle so can be moved other side so this other side so it can move to run this spring so this is spring bring back the handle to its original off position under the influence of its own force since there is a spring here so it can move from this position to this position run position and it can come back because of the spring action it can come back to original position another parallel is derived from the stud 1 given to another electromagnet called no voltage coil nvc no voltage coil so this stud 1 so it is connected to no voltage coil which is further connected to terminal f so that you can see so it is further connected to no voltage coil is connected to the terminal f the starting resistance at starting is entirely in series with the armature so see here that you can observe the starting resistance it is entirely uh, in series with the armature so so this is the starting resistance it is connected here it is connected here it is connected here and come to run and it is in series with the armature it is in series with the armature starting resistance is in series with the armature and uh, uh, the stud one given to another electromagnet called as no voltage release the other end of the starting resistance is connected to no voltage release and is we are further connected to field f the overload release olr so this overload release and no voltage coil this is no voltage coil act as two protecting devices of the starter so these are the two protecting devices how it is it protects so that we'll see later so this is the construction of a starter three point starter now how it works the working of a three point starter to start with the handle uh, in the off position when the supply of dc motor is switched on so initially the handle will be in off position when switch switched on so the handle starts moving on to the studs 1 2 3 4 5 the handle is slowly moved against the spring force to make contact to stud number 1 so when we switched on the supply so in the initial it was in off position when the switch on supply it starts moving on to the studs 1 2 3 4 at this point field winding of the shunt or the compound motor gets supply through the parallel path provided to starting the resistance so uh, when it is uh, switched on so when the stud is connected uh, this handle is connected to stud number 1 start connect to stud number 1 so this field winding it gets connection because it is connected to stud number 1 so it is connected here so it gets supply from the studs to starting resistances through the no voltage coil so this is a through no voltage coil the field winding gets connected and it gets supply when the entire starting resistance comes in series with the armature while entire starting resistance comes in series with the armature so these are the starting resistance r1 r2 r3 r4 r5 so these are always connected in series with the armature the high starting armature current thus gets limited as the current equation at this stage becomes ia is equal to e divided by ra plus rst since these all resistances are connected in series with the armature so this is added all resistances are added in series with the armature so current ia is equal to instead of e by ra it will become e by ra plus rst since resistance is connected r1 r2 r3 r4 r5 so initially when it is connected to r1 whole entire resistance along with armature resistance is included in the circuit connected to r2 small amount of resistance will be cut off r3 small amount of resistance will be cut off similarly r4 this much amount will be cut off only this much will be uh, connected in series with armature when it is connected to r5 full run position whole extra resistance and the stud resistance will be cut off only armature resistance will be present in that time so dc motor is started to run at its normal speed or it started to get its normal current so only because of the starting purpose this resistance has been included and slowly it is moving towards the studs once it has been completed up to 5 stud number 5 so every starting resistance will be cut off and normal current starts flowing in the motor so as the handle is moved further it goes on making contact with stud 2 3 4 etc 
and thus gradually cutting off the series resistance from the armature circuit as the motor gathers speed. So that is the thing what I told. Finally, when the starter hand is in run position, the entire starting resistance is eliminated, cut off. So when the handle is coming to the run position, from off to run position, entire resistance will be cut off, only armature resistance will be connected to the circuit. And motor runs with normal speed. Now the handle is moved manually from off to run position with the development of speed. So when it is coming to the run position, because of this soft iron piece, so this gets attracted. So this is a no voltage coil. So it will become magnet because it is gets supply from a field winding. So this will get, get magnet. This soft end piece attracted towards this magnet. It holds, it holds the soft end piece. So when it is connected to um, stud number five, so it will be remain in that position only when armature or when the motor attains its normal current or speed. Now, working of no voltage coil of a three point starter. So, now what is the working of what is the use of this no voltage coil and overload release coil that we will see one by one? The supply to the field winding is derived through no voltage coil. So, the no voltage coil, the supply it has been derived through no voltage coil. So, when field current flows, the no voltage coil is magnetized. So, because it is connected, no voltage coil is connected to the field winding. So when supply is switched on, so because of this field winding, no voltage coil is magnetized. Now when the handle is on run position, a soft end piece is connected to the handle and gets attracted by the magnetic force produced by no voltage coil. So as I told earlier, since it is magnet, it becomes magnet, soft end piece when it is coming to step number 5 is attracted by this uh, no voltage coil and it is it will be held in this position because the flow of current through it. The no voltage coil is designed in such a way that it holds the handle in run position against the force of the spring as long as supply is given to the motor. So even if a spring is connected, so no voltage coil, it is attracted soft end piece, so it will be remain, the handle will remain in this position as far as supply will be there. The no voltage coil holds the handle in run position and hence it is also called as hold on coil. Now, when, the, when there is any kind of supply failure, the current flow through no voltage coil is affected and is immediately loses its magnetic property and is unable to keep the soft end piece on the handle attracted. So what happens if sudden there is any supply failure is happened? So this no voltage coil uh, will not get any electrical supply. So when it is not getting any electrical supply, so this will be demagnetized. When this is demagnetized, the soft iron piece which is connected to this magnetic piece, it will be released because it will be demagnetized, it will be released and the hand will come to the off position suddenly. Suddenly it will come to the off position. So at this point, under the action of spring force, the handle comes back to off position, opening the circuit and thus switching off the motor. So that is the advantage of no voltage release coil. So all of a sudden, suddenly it will release the handle so that it will comes back to the off position. So opening the circuit and thus switching of the motor. Now, once again, if you want to um, even if you switch on the supply, once again if you motor is switch on supply, once again it will go for the procedure as before, it will start with start number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then it will come back to run position at which to hold the things, once again if you switch on the supply. So due to the combination of NVC and the spring, the starter handle always comes back to off position. Now what is the function of overload release? So this is a no, no voltage coil when the supply fails. So it will release the handle. Now what is the function of overload release? When the motor is overloaded, something overload has come, over current has come. That is the armature current exceeds the normal rated value. Now a lever is attracted by the electromagnet of the overload current. OLC, overload release, overload release coil actually, OLC. So lever is attracted by the electromagnet of overload release coil. So this one lever. So it will get attracted by the overload release coil when all of a sudden when a high current has come or high overload has come. 
current exceeds the normal value. So the liver is attracted by the electromagnet of OLC. So this will get attracted by the electromagnet here and closes the contact AA. So it will co close the contact. This is the AA contact. It will close here. When it is closing the contact AA, thus no voltage coil is short circuited. When this no voltage coil, it is further connected to no voltage coil, it will get short circuited. When no voltage coil is short circuited, so what happens? This will become demagnetized. When this becomes no demagnetized, once again, the handle will release to off position. As a result, the handle H is released, which in turn switch in the, uh, goes to the off position and the motor supply is cut off. When there is any over voltage comes, uh, this will attract the this electromagnet and say once again here there is one more electromagnet is called overload release when this is attracted overload release so this the coil terminal AA it will go here the other terminal and it will demagnetize the overload release so uh, NVC no voltage coil it will uh, demagnetize the no voltage coil so it will get attract this coil overload release will act and this will demagnetize the no voltage coil and this will get demagnetizes and hence the handle comes back to the off position and so motor is switched off. So that is the working of no voltage coil as well as overload release coil.